the very first thing I would upgrade on my sim racing setup is Hey guys, I'm Daniel Morad, professional GT driver and also kind of like a big time sim racer. I love I love sim racing. When I first started, I basically started from humble beginnings. I had Logitech G25 equipment attached to some spare furniture that my parents had kicking around their house. So I'm gonna help you guys from a professional driver's point of view, I'm gonna help you pick out the pieces to build your dream rig. The first thing you should be upgrading is your chassis. You need to start from a good foundation. It's like a house. You don't build a house in a quicksand pit. You need to get off your desk or your coffee table like I was as soon as possible and get yourself a rig. If you can, try to get yourself a rig that you can grow into. The worst thing that I felt I did was get a rig that was halfway between where I wanted to go and where I was. And I regret that decision because I ended up selling my, let's say, not so stable chassis quite quickly and just moved right on to something that was a lot more suitable to my needs. So definitely go for something that you can grow into. One of my partners, Advanced Sim Racing, they're probably one of the best chassis manufacturers you can go to. The most stable chassis that I've tested. And also there's a discount code in the description below that will help you guys out if you're interested. But getting a chassis, huge difference maker, even with your existing equipment, it will transform your entry level gear into something that gives you a lot more feeling and feedback. So before you change anything else about your pedals, your steering wheel, definitely go for the chassis. And with that, hopefully you've budgeted enough for a, a nice comfortable seat as well. Those two kind of go hand in hand. You, you definitely want to have a nice comfortable seat because think about it, you're gonna be driving for several hours and the last thing you want is back pain. So try not to cheap out on your seat. It's actually a very important part of your sim racing experience. If you guys have limitations in terms of space, you can always throw some caster wheels onto your rig and move it out of the way if needed. So if you're using a desk setup and you're using your monitor from your desk, you can move that rig out of the way. But I'm telling you, it makes such a big difference to be able to drive in a proper rig with a proper seating position. And if you want to learn how to actually set your rig up properly, I actually made a video on this topic already on setting yourself up with the correct ergonomics and also how to avoid any pain that you may encounter while sim racing. The benefit of having a chassis is you'll be able to better utilize your existing equipment and feel it a lot better. You'll drive in a correct race car driver position, be a lot more comfortable, and also it's gonna give you an amazing platform to build on top of. If you started with a brake pedal that doesn't have load cell, that's probably the next thing you're going to want to get. The, the load cell braking just really helps you have a lot more control on the brake. And especially if you're driving a simulation game that requires you to brake correctly, the, the higher up you go in the rank and the faster the cars get, especially if they lose the ABS feature, then you're going to be completely lost. So you definitely want to look at a brake or a pedal set that has load cell. That will be a game changer for you. But if, if it's not in your budget, you can't go for a super high end equipment right away, then you can look in more of the mid tier range. I don't have any specific partners or uh, companies that you can look at, but there are a ton available. If you're ever interested or have questions in terms of what gear you can get in, in that mid range area, you can always jump in my discord, which is linked down below in the description. But essentially what a load cell is going to give you is just way more control, a lot more uh, feeling and it will allow you to control the balance of your car over a traditional entry level braking system that is non load cell. The benefits of a good pedal set is going to be really good consistency, faster lap times, better feeling on the brake, and also a lot better raceability while you're wheel to wheel. The next upgrade I would go for is either VR or a triple screen setup. Now I'm assuming most of you are starting on a single monitor. And I think that it won't necessarily make you faster to get triple monitors or VR, but it may make you a little bit more 
comfortable in terms of giving you some depth perception with VR. And if you can and you have the space, then just go straight for triple monitors. I started with a single monitor and went right to VR after that. It really helped give me a sense of depth inside the game where I struggled big time connecting myself with the simulator. Coming from the real race car, you have depth perception that you rely on. Coming into a corner, you can really judge the speed and also the, the closing speed to a corner and to cars around you. But I seem to struggle with that as I transitioned from the real car and dabbled into sim racing. VR changed it for me, but the only problem with VR is even with current PCs at their maximum capacity, high-end PCs, it's still a struggle to run uh, the highest amount of FPS on VR headsets. And it may change based on the settings, but I always found it very difficult to get consistent frames per second. And I value my frames per second over anything else because if you have a consistent FPS value, you'll be able to consistently hit your reference points. And racing is all about timing. And if your timing's off, then you're going to make mistakes. So to, to make it more fluid and to smooth out my experience, I veered away from VR and ended up going to triples. Now, the benefit of triples is number one, it's so much easier just to jump in your rig, push the button and jump in the car and go. For me, I stream on Twitch a few times a week, actually. Now's a good time to plug that. Um, it's twitch.tv slash Morad. Uh, Moradness is not Moradness anymore. Daniel Morad, that's my name. How you doing? Um, Moradness was my old name. I changed it. That's our company name where you can get a nice pair of sim racing gloves if you like. Use Rad Nation to get 10% off your first order. Um, but back to the topic of my triple monitors, I went to triples. It was just way easier. I could jump in, go. Streaming was very easy. I can interact with the audience. Also, it just wrapped around my view and it did give me that immersive experience. Maybe not quite as immersive as VR would be, but a lot more sustainable for a long period of time while I'm racing. And it's just, it's easy. I jump in, drive, and I get a really nice field of view. I can see cars beside me. Now, it didn't necessarily make me faster to have the three screens, but it did help me race better because I could see the cars around me. And especially on those first laps where it's really hectic and there's just cars swarming you, it helps so much to have that extra field of view. Now, I know you'll probably think, well, why not go for an ultra wide? Now, I just haven't been able to tune a 49 inch ultra wide for my setup to suit my needs, but there are other options on the market and I think they're actually pretty exciting. Having a little bit more field of view, bigger screen would definitely be um, suitable for if you're using a single screen, super ultra wide, but for now I'm using 32 inch triple monitors and it's suiting my needs perfectly. The benefits of having triple monitors would be ease of use, jumping in and just driving, having a lot more interaction with my streaming audience. And also over a single monitor, I get a lot more field of view. I can see who's beside me. And also I can spot those blind apexes that are around hairpin corners. The final piece I would upgrade in terms of the core of my sim racing rig would be a really nice steering motor. Now, you may have started on a belt driven motor or even a gear driven force feedback motor, but a direct drive wheel, if you can upgrade to a direct drive, it makes a world of a difference. And um, specifically more in the higher end direct drive, it's incredible how much feeling you can get from it. It's not gonna necessarily make you a faster driver, but it just adds to the immersion level and it actually helps you push closer to the limits on a more consistent basis while making micro mistakes and being able to correct them. So it definitely makes it a lot more immersive, more natural and intuitive to drive. You'll be able to drive closer on the limit and I, I said it won't make you faster, but it will definitely make you more consistent over a multiple lap run period. So during a race in hand, it ultimately does make you faster if you take the full race duration into effect. But in terms of single lap speed, you may be able to pull one out here and there, but it's very hard on 
lower end or entry level equipment to extract the maximum out of the car. The faster your steering motor is, and basically the higher end your steering motor is, the quicker it can respond and react to the car having some oversteer where the rear slides, or if you have understeer where the front tire actually breaks through the grip level and starts to slide across the front tire, the higher end your equipment is, the better you can feel that kind of stuff. Personally, I'm running a SimiCube Ultimate. It is the pinnacle of steering motors. And it's crazy how quick the wheel motor is. I can catch oversteers really, really well. I actually refer to them on stream as SimiCube Ultimate saves because I don't think with any other wheel motor, I could actually save <laughs> some of the mistakes I've made. So it is almost like a cheat code and um, it saved me on more occasions than one. The final point is actually something that's associated with the steering motor or the direct drive motor, and that's a steering wheel. You need a steering wheel. You're not gonna grab the shaft and turn the car. So steering wheel is something that's really more of a, a luxury item. You could obviously go for a steering wheel that doesn't have all the fancy buttons and backlit uh, buttons, but you definitely want something that's rigid. So before you get a steering wheel, just know what you need. What are your, your necessities? Do you need a lot of buttons? Do you need something that's uh, a wide wheel, a round wheel? Are you looking for a formula style rim, a, a NASCAR rim, a G, you know, let's say a traditional old school GT rim? It's really personal preference. And this is something that you can add to your collection over time. If you want something that just does it all. Maybe you should look for uh, a D-shaped rim to start with, something that will help you do some oval racing, rally, formula cars, GT, kind of a do it all rim. But you know, if you want to make your experience a lot more immersive, then you may start looking at different steering rims for different uh, situations with whatever car you're, you're running on the simulator. But that's something that's a really personal preference. It's not really something I would attack first as a, an upgrading option. It's definitely last on the list. And like I said, it's more of a luxury item, but um, yeah, the steering, the steering wheel does surprisingly make a really nice difference and gives you a good experience behind the wheel. I know that for me, I'm trying to get as many buttons and utilize my buttons in the same way I would utilize my real race car button so I have everything mapped out in the exact same orientation as my real car just so it's more subconscious when I use the high beam or push the radio button it's in the exact same position as my real car. Now there's a lot of other things you can add to your rig for instance you can add accessories like button boxes, motion platforms, uh, even haptic feedback systems, uh, any of those kind of things are definitely, th they're, they're items I would add after you've tackled the, the main list. Um, for me, I actually find that the D-Box motion platform, although it's pretty high end and let's say an end of the road item that you would purchase after you have everything else, it is something that really adds to my experience because I race in real life and I'm looking for that ultimate immersion. I tune my rig for performance, but also for immersion. If I can get the immersion without losing performance, it's a win-win. I definitely won't sacrifice performance for immersion. So I have to make sure that it checks both of those boxes off for me to keep something on my rig. So um, button boxes are definitely a, a nice addition. You can pick up various levels of button boxes, whether really high end, or you can even turn uh, things like your cell phone into a button box while you're racing. And fun fact, you can use more Adnus gloves with the touchscreen functionality on your, your touchscreen phones. If you have a spare uh, iPod or iPhone or smart device uh, kicking around and you want to use that as a button box, you can also use that. So those are really inexpensive items, but you can go all the way up to the high end. Literally, once you have the foundation and you have a good chassis, and I mean, you can build up anything on top of that, just like I've done behind me, I've put so many different accessories and really personalize my rig for my needs. So you guys can do the same. The world's your oyster. And now that you have a good foundation, I'd love to see all of you guys' rigs that you've upgraded, whether you have a great rig or uh, if you're in the process of upgrading yours, I would love to see you post it in my Discord. The link again down below, 
and we have a tab for sim racing rigs that you guys can share your rigs. I'm really curious to see uh, all of your videos and maybe I can use some of those photos for a future YouTube video, uh, judging your rigs or going over some of uh, the chassis that the community has. I hope this upgrade path or guide helps steer you guys in the right direction and helps assist you going from uh, you know, just starting sim racing or having an entry level setup even if you have an entry level, mid tier or high end setup, hopefully this helps you understand the right path and maybe you can share this with a friend and get them into sim racing as well and steer them in the right direction. Now, if you have any questions about the rig or what you wanna upgrade, equipment, I've tried a few things, I can definitely help assist you and like I said, steer you in the right direction, but uh, don't be afraid to comment down below. I'm really active in the YouTube comments also, uh, like I mentioned on Discord or any social media platform, you can uh, hit me up in the DMs. I'll try my best to get back in touch with you guys. And um, really, we're a tight-knit community here. So if you have any questions whatsoever, I'm sure someone will, will be able to help you out. Now, if you like the video, make sure you smash the like button down below. Don't break it. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more sim racing and real life videos. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one.